So you've got your new FortiGate. How do you configure it? Coming up. To get more easy setup tips for your FortiGate firewall, subscribe now and don't forget to click on the bell notification and you won't miss anything. So you've got your new FortiGate and your new two FortiGate firewalls. What do you need to do? You have probably connected your FortiGate using a network cable um, to your computer and configured it. Um, FortiGate Appliances comes with at least port one, one of the ports, which is usually port one that is already configured with the IP address of 192.168.199. You need to configure your uh, PC subnet to be on that same subnet, get to the uh, IP address of the interface, of the port one interface, and from there you're actually starting to configure your 48. Now you can configure a FortiGate using the graphical user interface, which has many features. It even has a feature visibility feature in the system settings so that you can disable or enable new features which are not available over here. Now you can configure your FortiGate using the graphical user interface and you can configure it using the command line. FortiGate experts use the command line almost all of the time. We will look at the command line, but um, we will make our way using the graphical user interface. Uh, to get to the command line, you need to click here. It is actually a JavaScript app that runs on top the uh, admin web app. Um, probably the first thing that you want to do is to write down get system status so you can see uh, your 48 serial number, um, which ASICs, which uh, um, accelerated hardware does it support, are you using a hard disk or a flash drive? Uh, the current uh, security profile database and so on. Now, we went into the interfaces. You probably have one interface uh, that you're connected to, which will be the management interface. Now, you need to connect one of your WAN interface um, to your ISP, either through a modern router or you can use your 48 as the router itself. Um, each interface each interface has a physical switchboard that you can connect to different subnets in your network. Now let's just um, edit one interface. Let's see what's inside. You can name your interface according to the subnet um, in your local area network. Let's assume that we have a management subnet. All right, now you can uh, define it a specific role. It can be a WAN, a DMZ, an undefined role, or uh, a WAN. So let's uh, use the LAN. So now we know that we have a management LAN connected to port eight on our 40 gate. Now, the addressing mode can be manual, it can be DHCP. Let's use the manual option and let's configure it to be 192.168.2.1 slash 24 since we're using um, a 24 subnet. Now, this address is the gateway interface address. So any computer that will connect to one of uh, to the to port 8 will get uh, an IP address in that uh, subnet that is the 192.168.2.0 subnet but its gateway address will be 
now we will also open the DHCP server so anyone that is connected there's a pool of IP address that it will grab uh, we'll look at DHCP server very soon before that uh, we need to configure administrative access which protocol will support administrative access we'll just use HTTPS and HTTP for now we can also use SSH we can also uh, configure it to support pings from host in that subnet or from a 40 manager uh, but we will not do it right now LDP is a protocol that enables discovery between devices in the network it doesn't really matter you can disable or keep it um, for now now we have a DHCP server as I said any client that connects to that port will receive one of the IP addresses from the pool you don't have to use all the pool you can use only 20 IP addresses um, you can keep the DNS server the same as configured here or you can specify your own DNS server let's just specify Google's uh, DNS server uh, you can control the list time and if you click on the advanced if you have a DHCP server that is part of your domain uh, which is uh, not your 48 or your 48 interface you can configure its IP address here and then whenever a packet arrives on that interface it will uh, head over to the DHCP server but for now we're, we're using the um, gateway interface as the DHCP server you can configure an NTP server you can configure uh, and this option is for a more advanced users DHCP scopes or options and you can assign different IPs to different devices based on their MAC address another option is device detection device detections allows your 40 gate to detect which device and which operating system uh, devices on the networks uh, belongs to this is one of the things that you should keep enabled um, don't bother with the explicit web proxy um, you can enable a captive portal so if you have outsourced employees and you wish to um, um, jump a landing page with uh, user credentials you can also do that but uh, we will skip it for now so this is the basic configuration of the interface okay so now we have a management interface we have another interface which is the WAN interface that you connect it uh, you connect it to your ISP router we will call it WAN1 the role is WAN we will uh, we can use DHCP and if we want to make it uh, more reliable we will use a static IP address so my uh, gateway uh, interface is 10.0.3.75 and my router is actually 10.0.3.1 uh, I've enabled HTTP and HTTPS and as you can see uh, you don't have a DHCP server whenever the role of your interface is when that is one of the best practices when using uh, an interface as a WAN interface okay so we have a management interface we have a WAN interface now we want to make our uh, managers uh, that are connected to that port which is port 8 to get out to the internet so the next thing to do is to configure a policy now we will configure a very basic policy which is a full access policy 
let's name it let's name it managers one and the incoming interface is management that's the LAN interface of our managers the outgoing interface is when one that is the interface that is connected to our ISP router that is the interface that takes them outside of the LAN towards the internet now when it comes to source let's for this video let's make it um, very generic anyone can go anyone we can configure user groups and and different users um, we can also um, configure sets of um, parameters that control uh, the different users but for now as for source anyone can get out as for destination they can go just about anywhere we can also create specific objects that will allow them to go to specific places but for now they can go just about anywhere as for scheduling we're not limiting them to specific hours or days so as for scheduling again they can uh, get out to the internet any time of the day as for service we can uh, deny them from getting out in specific services such as FTP but for now for our specific policy we will let them use just about any service now the action is accept we can also create a policy that will deny specific services or specific users from getting out or from doing specific things for now the uh, action is accept inspection mode is uh, is another topic that we will look into that is the inspection uh, that is done to our networks when we're using security profiles such as antivirus or IPS for now we will keep it at flow based mode now we will use NAT NAT is network address translation that is our uh, private IP address which can be 192.168.2.6 uh, will be translated to your 48 or to your ISP uh, public internet address um, now we will not use security profiles you know what let's use antivirus let's use the default profile the default antivirus profile we will use certificate inspection when we use certificate inspection your 48 checks the different fields that are coming from um, uh, servers certificates to see if they're valid if uh, um, it doesn't have any mismatches and so on the last thing is to use our logging options we can log only security events but we will log all sessions so later on we can look at the login report and see what our users or what our host did okay so we have a managers one policy we have two interfaces the when one which connects us to the outsides and the management uh, interface which uh, managers in our uh, company can connect to and get their IP addresses that was the second step now the third step is to configure a static route a static route is actually uh, for our usage will be a default route that is I've already configured one so let's just look at it if you want to create new you just create new so default route actually tells your Fortigate that whenever he sees a packet uh, any packet that is destined to any place 
which doesn't have a route at the routing table, it will route it towards the WAN interface. And the WAN interface address is a 10.0.3.1. Remember, my ISP router has that address. Now you can use specific parameters as distance. Uh, you can use a priority. It just tells me that I already have that static route, which I do. And once we have a static route, a policy, and the interfaces that are configured correctly, we can now connect our host to uh, the management interface and those hosts can now get onto the internet. Let's just move to the uh, CLI and let's see how do we configure um, interfaces using the CLI. So for the sake of our purpose, let's, um, let's configure port 7. So using the CLI, we will use the config system interface. Now let's uh, edit port 7 as we said. Let's set its IP to 192.168.4.1. Uh, with a subnet of 24. Let's set the management, the management protocols to HTTP and HTTPS. And what else? We can use many more if you will look at the, let's end it. Now I want to show you something. When you, um, when you config um, system interface, let's just get out here, config system interface, and if we look at port, port 1, for example, we can use the show full config, and as you can see, there are dozens of features of configurations that you can add. For our sake, we have only enabled the IP address um, on, the, on that interface. And let's look at it. Let's just refresh our page. Port 7, and there it is. Now, we can also configure the DHCP server and so on. We have not done so on our CLI. Um, the last thing I want to show you, once you get into your uh, FortiGate, you're actually the FortiGate administrators. Now, you have two types of administrators on... Actually, you have more than two types, but the two most common types is uh, a super admin, which is you. You have privileges to just about anything. You can read and write. And you can create another uh, type of administrator, which is the professional admin, and where you can actually enable it, different read and write privileges on the different places uh, on your FortiGate. If you will head over to the CLI and use the config system admin and you can edit the admin name i have two admins i have one which is the um, super admin and the second one which is offer test which is my second uh, admin um, so now let's look at the different configurations that you can add to your admin again lots of configuration that's not the only place where you can um, um, configure different things. You can also configure it on a globally, which is the config system global. 
but um, one of the things that I wanted to show you is that you can strengthen your admin account by using a trusted host. So you can also look at it um, here. Sorry, here. You can configure a trusted host that is a trusted IP address that only your admin can get from. So you can configure the IP address on your uh, office at your work and you can configure another trusted host which is the IP address at your home. Only from those two IP addresses your admin can get into the FortiGate. Uh, you can also configure two-factor authentication which is also a very common security procedure. Uh, you can use 40 token and you can also use your email as a two-factor authentication. Um, let's just show you how to do so. Let's clear that out. So we can use the config system admin set. No, let's edit the profile before and set two-factor email set email to and let's set it to one of my uh, gmail accounts let's end it and now if we'll go back to our admin profile uh, let's view it again and you can see that you can now use an email-based two-factor authentication.